Michael Jordan pushing someone out of the way to get to my father in, in an arena <laughs> That's uh, was extraordinary. It's it, like it, no it, social media, like not even the dating apps. Oh, I don't need dating. I know. <laughs> I would like you to say who you think it is. I want you to say it. No, I want you to say it. The quote is, sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Now that's the quote. <laughs> that's what I've experienced. It says, yes, whether it's like flying 2 a.m. somewhere or just seeing someone, it's very James Bond esque, but whether it's just, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I love about it, is that if someone says there's an extraordinary moment, I can literally bolt without pause. Right. And it reminds right. me of a great quote my sister said many years ago. She said, never pause. They'd be introduced to me by my sister or my dad, but be looking at them while they shook my hand. They mm -hmm. couldn't even just say, nice to meet you, Jen. You're not seeing me at all. But I'm not even failing. You're just not even wanting to see what is here. Right. Well, how long have you been doing for maintenance? You know, the cart tells you. Yeah. We, our bodies don't always do that. There's more there. There's yes. something I've always been, and you're realizing it's kind of who you are, Jen. And we're going to all join forces to take on modern day traffic. You say that word and people get so nervous. And that's part of what I want to change society. So I'm in the prevention world. Mm -hmm. I want to get in advance and make it so this doesn't happen. The police know that this one building is where the most of the crimes are happening in the world. And they don't, you don't hear like, so we're upping the, you never hear that. You just hear it, number one again, right. number one again, right. number one again. Okay, that was that. That's exactly what that was, but you still have all the same aspirations. You still have that little kid in candy store energy. Go get it. He says, I'm going back to the start. And I literally had an experience that all the great psychiatrists of all time would be jealous of. Uh, <laughs> young Freud, all the boys. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to episode two with James Haven, um, the son of John Voight and brother of Angelina Jolie. We are talking about all the things that he's got coming up for 2024. Um, and we hope you enjoy this episode with Dan Eisenstein, myself, Jessica Entner, and James Haven. I, I think working with mental health and talking about it and being vulnerable about it is what opens other people Absolutely. up. And that's why it's so important to talk well, about and, just to, and have resources. Right. And just to add even me, as I said, because we'll get to it later, like these movies that are going or the work I'm doing, whatever. But I still, there's, there's such a drought and I'm never going to forget it, you know, that there was this time when I thought, okay, I'm going to be that. And right. There's like this drought or whatever. I'll, I'll just call it that for the moment. But during that time, I, you know, so I'm not saying that like there's moments where I wake up every morning going, nope, things are really happening. <laughs> you know? right. But there, I have to remember myself it's not even self-doubt. It's just, I just have to remember that it's like, okay, that was then. That's exactly what that was, but you still have all the same aspirations. You still have that little kid in candy store energy. Go get it. And and I actually had, I went back to a Coplay concert, which I just went to recently, which was life-changing. Back to all the movies, which we'll pivot in a second to, so it's a good pivot. So again, everything, I, as you can see, goes back to music. So there you go. I'm, a mu um, I'm in the music business, so I, I'm I, a music Well, exactly. Nerd, I mean, it's, so it's I just, it's all, it's, all, it's all music. It's yeah. all music. But I went to the Coldplay concert, the one at the uh, Hollywood Bowl. It was like, every seat was, I've never seen it. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, this place was like, pack, pack, pack. Right. Was that, There's people in the trees. No, it was like, ah, <laughs> uh, it was like, this is the most crazy. I mean, it had to be 94. I think they said 94,000 is what is if it's that crazy capacity. So it was like 94,000 people. So here we go. So I went there and, you know, Again, like as you've gotten to know some of my stories, I always have these very unique experiences. And every, everybody's like there because there's their last show. So everybody's like, what do you think their last song's going to be? So, well, they've been doing this, this same last song for the whole tour. I said, yeah, but this is their last North American show. They're not going to do that. They're going to do something else. Right, you know, so right. it becomes that kind of thing. So I picked Magic and I was right. But my point was, <laughs> The Scientist is the song that's my personal favorite. And, you know, I'm just going to say a couple of lyrics, but I'm going to say the punchline, which is the part that changed my life in this moment on October 1st. Come up to meet you, tell you I'm sorry, tell you I say you were. Okay. We all know that's the opening, if you know the song. But I always heard the next part as a man, in the case of Chris, because he's singing it, saying to someone he loves, something happened between us, of course. But as I try to figure all the things out, whatever, I'm going back to the start. Like I'm going back to when we were magic. And that's how I always saw the song. So like a love song between two people. So I saw it plural is the point. Somehow, because I was there alone, I all of a sudden was standing, I mean, he was like, you know, a couple of, you know, because I'm right in front of him. And all of a sudden he says, I'm going back to the start. And I literally had an experience that all the great psychiatrists of all time would be jealous of. Uh, <laughs> young Freud, all the boys. Okay, here we go. 
But I had an experience where the Star Wars is like my favorite movie, so I'm going to kind of make a little gesture. It was like a reverse almost, if you will, light speed moment where all of my life, all of, and mostly all of the darkness, all of the self-doubts and the, you know, never, never going to whatever, all of it just kind of flashed, all the memories of pain, all the whatever. And I was just kind of going back in time. And then all of a sudden, it all happened like within just a few seconds when he said that lyric. And all of a sudden I'm in Malibu, I'm a little baby, I'm tan, I'm being chased by my mom and my dad. And I just remember going, <gasps> I'm going back to the start. Mm. And ever since I said those words from October, that night onward, but I mean, from October 2nd onward, everything I've been working on is happening. Isn't that weird? It's crazy. I'm yeah. kind of with, I'm, and I'm, I always yeah. look at it like I'm a little bit of a late bloomer in a weird way. Like I've done a lot of stuff in my life, but now I've hit like the stride yeah. and it comes with the confidence of knowing who you are, where you came from. Well, and exactly. Yeah. And just to tie the two together now, because of course I know my mom again, this is just for you. Hi, you mom. know, yes, exactly. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, I was named after James Berry, six words, all children except one grow up. Again, six words, Coldplay. I'm going back to the start. Yeah. That's what I had to do. I just had to go back to like the happy, like what was all that was magically perfect as a little child, in that case, a baby, but like a little one and just go, oh my God, that's James. Yeah. Not the guy going, I can't believe this town or I can't believe, yeah. that's not James. Yeah. yeah. That's not James. James is the guy going, no, if there's a concert in this town, we're finding it. James yeah. is not like, there's not, I'm, I'm tired and it's foggy and I don't want to do anything today. That's not me. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I just got, ca I got caught in that. Yeah. Again, back to the, the war, you know, not of yourself and getting like, that's who you are. So, yeah. Have you done a lot of work? I did, I did something called Hoffman. I'm sure you mm -hmm. may be familiar. Sure. I did that a couple of years ago and it was actually, I did it right before COVID, which was there you go. <laughs> an amazing time to do that. Yeah. Um, but it was one of the first times I was able to truly grieve my mother. Well, the, yeah, well, the key with me is, first of all, I'm trained in all of this stuff. I'm trained in trauma training. I'm trained in medicine. So, so it's an interesting moment as you're asking it. I've done all kinds of things, but a lot of it's been outside. You know, it's okay. almost like I learn all this to help you. Right. <laughs> and so what's interesting is now it's kind of, I've, yes, now I've been able to kind of do more of an introspection of myself and and really be able to to go there. But it kind of started outward first. Right. And then I was able to do the inward. Yeah. I think that's I think that's fair for a lot of people because mm -hmm. it's once you start to see oh this makes oh I should probably start to look at what right this well yes me. exactly yeah. yes because you try like, to yeah, yeah funny that I relate to all this yes. so much well yeah. and also and also trauma just that big word because you know we think of like it is a big we word. think of the physicalness of trauma and that's why I keep saying over and over again mental health is the Rosetta Stone of health yeah. it's that when we hear certain words like I'll use a couple you know certain words here. We don't have an opiate crisis. We have a pain management crisis. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's how you word it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if someone says trauma, most people have this physical view of trauma. It's always the physical gesture. Trauma, like it's mm -hmm. traumatic. But it can be here. It can mm -hmm. be in your head. Mm -hmm. And you don't see the trauma as much as someone just screaming at you. Or the trauma in many divorced families where there's a safety, meaning you feel so safe. And then whoever leaves, and then you know that safety can be broken mm -hmm. at any time. Yep. Yeah. You can't just say, well, I feel safe. Well, well I'm going to protect. protect. Well, yeah, but if you know safety can be broken, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you can have abandonment issues, yep. which is oh, what I had for a long time. Yeah. Exactly. May I ask you, how how old were you when your parents split up? And and I don't know a lot about it. I've done, of course, a little bit of research, but it was well, pretty traumatic. It's the class, traumatic I, I, feel like it's the class, I feel like it's the classic, you know, divorce card where you go, when did it happen? You'll see what I mean in a second. Right. And then like, when were they officially divorced? So oh, yeah. the, the actual half would be two and a half. Which okay. of course is key because in the first three years of your life, you learn more than the rest of your life. There you go. Uh, what's so the were, difference you were, between you and Angie? Two years. So she was, she was just like a six, six months. months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So she didn't remember them together. In it, I can't, I couldn't ask her if she has anything. Right, right, you know, right, but right, yes, right, in the context, like, in the context, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, in the yeah. context. Because yeah. mine were th I was three and I barely remember them together. Yeah glimpses. I have that memory, as I said, very clearly, because every time I go out to the Malibu colony, very much like Superman, and you'll learn in the future, I am Superman, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Again, the jawline. Whole <laughs> other story. Whenever I go to my fortress of solitude, as it's called in the comics, um, which would be that Malibu area, I can feel it. I, I have quick glances and, you know, in the memory of, of visuals, but it's also when I'm there. Did you, your parents it. lived in the colony when you were a baby? 
Yeah, my first year of my life, essentially. That's so that funny. I, I, we've never talked about this, nope. but you know, my grandparents had a house in the colony. Fantastic. Yeah. For my dad should have bought that house, by the way. I want to put that out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to buy that one day. Thank you very much. I mean, we've touched on a lot and it's really been great because I know that as you and I have talked about our podcast, you've really wanted to talk about some mental health issues. <laughs> like, and Jamie's is the personal? best to I'm talk like, about it go. with. He's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Everybody should yeah. realize it's not like a, ooh, because that's one last thing I want to say about it. You say that word and people get so nervous. And that's part of what I want to change in society. I want, I want whether it's myself or whether it's other people, or whether we change the terminology, as I was saying, back to pain management instead of opiate, whatever helps the conversation. So people go, I do actually deal with that as well. Because if you say, ooh, oh, you're this, you're that, and the labels kick in and they're, oh, he's going through. And it, <laughs> wait, stop doing that. Like, right. I'm dealing with something. Uh -huh. And I want it to be as simple as someone else going, I know that feeling. And I've had similar, like, we can just talk. Yeah. So we can, before we get into like, quote unquote, what to do about it, you know, just to be able to have normal conversations about that would be amazing. I don't want relationships in my life anymore where I don't have that. Do right. you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't right. want, that's not where I live. Right. It's not where I've ever lived. And right. I think in order to get past the stigma mm -hmm. of mental health is a, as we said, talking about it, but also having self-forgiveness. Yeah. You know, we're not, you, you keep using the word expectations and I think it's a yeah. wonderful, wonderful world to yeah. word to use because we have self-imposed expectations. We have expectations of other people. We have expectations of our family and our friends. But when you have such high expectations to be a certain way all the time, you're going to fail no matter what, you can't always be one type of, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we all have so many levels to us to not be able to express certain sides of ourselves out of fear of being labeled or having a stigma. Oh, you're depressed or, oh, you're going through a mm -hmm. mental health crisis. It's like, no, I'm just, I'm fucked up right now. Let me right. be fucked up and I'll come through and I'll right. talk about it. Right. That's that. I want to get there. You oh, know? that's the most I mean, important. I have a Because otherwise you go in circles. Like, yeah. You go in circles. I, had to, I my my ten year old. I am so proud. I'm pretty sure he's my mother. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so proud of him because he is extremely self aware. And I tell him, he, like I'll see him get worked up about stuff, and I'm like, you know what? You're allowed to be mad. You're not allowed to make everybody else around you feel like you. But if you're having a bad day, go beat your pillow up and cry in your pillow. And he has done that. He came home from school one day. Mm -hmm. He walked into his room. He's like, I just need a minute. And I, I was like. It. So proud because that's it. And especially for boys, right? Yeah. Boys are told at a very, not so much in this generation, but our generation, we were still coming out of the like, kids are supposed to be seen and not heard. Boys are tough. They don't have emotion. You're not supposed to show emotions and God forbid you cry. That is so debilitating and detrimental to somebody's growth. Absolutely. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. So thank yes. you for opening up. The Absolutely. Conversation. I love it. I love it. I love that. <clears throat> you know, it's funny, you know, we, we, we brought you in and, and it, it, again, it goes back to 90210. And we, we talk about growing up in Beverly Hills or growing up under the shadow of celebrity or growing up with money or this or that. But then we really do dive into like, what is going on with you? And I know that mental health, human trafficking, that's such a passion for you. And I know Jessica is, really, you know, has some strong feelings about mental health and wanting to talk about it and opening the door to it and shining a light on it. So I love that the both of you, like, <laughs> I just kind of like shut up and be quiet because, you know, I, I started the conversation. So <laughs> no, no, it is. It is. I take, started, in, take in what we're saying, Dan. Yeah, take yeah. it in. I started the conversation. I opened the door, but yeah. then to listen to you guys, it was awesome because- well, it's, the first, it's the first time I've met Jamie. Uh, Jamie yeah. I'm, I'm going to call you Jamie because- Call me Jamie. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the I, big one. You have such an, I, I will say, you have such a wonderful energy. You have such a-, a big presence. You're beautiful to look at all of those things, but you have such like a kind aura. I don't know how else to say it. So it's a, it's a pleasure. You know, what's funny. <laughs> I think that's why we became friends from the get-go. You have a kind aura and I was yeah. a kid who liked kind people. And even wow. though we were that's peers, awesome. of course. you're, you've always been that way, kind and loving. And let's talk about you and what you're, no. what else you're doing. I mean, I know you have some movie projects that are happening. Yeah. Let's, I mean, this, about? this is the, now, this, yeah. now we get back to what, like, yeah. you know, what I thought originally was I was supposed to do. It, and, and then I did so many other things. So, um, this is so wild. So coming off this film, that of course I did with my father, this short film I did with my father many years ago called Court of Conscience. You know, we had a great experience and, you know, I always, of course, dreamed of obviously doing features and things like that. And right now, literally, I mean, as we speak, we're just finalizing things. So I can't say exactly when we're going to start, but it'll come out next November. So 
I can, I can at least do a little reverse engineering here. But basically, it's a film uh, I get to direct. The, we're looking at the cast right now. be Carrie Underwood and this girl named Tinsley, who was in Stranger Things, and my father. And it's this kind of trifecta movie about this mother and her two daughters and um, her father, in their case, the grandfather. And uh, without giving too much away, but, you know, because obviously we want the audience to, you know. But um, I think it's a very pertinent movie for our time in that the little girl loses her father and then she starts to question God and starts to question life. And so this is a little girl that's questioning it. And, and we all know if she doesn't get answers, where she's going to go. So it's a very important moment for the work I do and also with people in this day and age of where things seem to be so crazy. So um, we'll be shooting it hopefully February, March of next year uh, for a November release. Uh, another movie I'm working on right now would be something for Quentin Aaron, uh, who was in The Blind Side, Big Mike, and Kevin Hart. It's a Christmas movie um, that's being worked out as we speak as well. And then there's a film that I've been wanting to make for many years um, in Las Vegas, because a huge part of my upbringing on my cousin's side, we'd uh, go to Las Vegas. And I've never seen this, without saying it too loud, I don't want to give it away. But again, I've never seen the experience of Las Vegas shown the way I know I will show it. It's, oh. it's more of just the strip, you know what I mean? So it's, let, let's show Vegas. So, and my dream cast would be like uh, someone like a Justin Bieber uh, in um, one of the roles. Um, hint, hint. Yes, hint, hint. <laughs> and, uh, and those Justin are the, the, the there name. you go. <laughs> and, uh, and those are like three movies. And then um, on a complete side note, and this just happened recently, and I, I don't know yet how much involved I'm going to be altogether. One of my, you know, fellow classmates, uh, Justin Trugman, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, you know, I hadn't seen him in years. And um, I banged into him um, in this deli with his dad and my dad. And he just said, he's in music. And I said, that's great. Well, you know, I'd love to come by and see what you do. Because of course, as we know in this podcast, I love music. So just to cut ahead, I'm doing already marketing for this group, um, which I can't wait. He says, you know, he's helped create this K-pop band called Five Alive. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I got to listen to their music. And then just like two weeks ago, I got to see their first music video shot. And I was just in total awe. I got to meet their parents. They're like these young girls and getting ready for this big world. Their album will drop next year. But this is the, where I'm saying, like, I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. But like, even the parents are like going, so are you going to document this whole thing? Like almost famous type thing? And I'm thinking, oh, I would love to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get to be on tour with them on their big explosion of taking over the K-pop world. Yeah. yeah, I can do this. That's right so up your That's right up yeah. my alley. So, so, so that's being talked to as well. Um, and then, yeah. And then, and then just, um, you know, these other things I'm working on, um, you'll hear about this too. I'm just going to give you just a little quick laundry yeah. list of some of 2024. Okay. Um, uh, one of my friends has dreamed of doing this for years. This ties back to trafficking on my end. So we joined forces. He got very close with all the most iconic civil rights leaders in our country. Of course, Malcolm X's family, MLK, Frederick Douglass, uh, Emmett Till, and the list goes on, Jackie Robinson, just to name a few. And on February 13th and 14th, there's going to be a big event at the White House. And I'm going to be sitting or standing or doing something. Well, you see where I go here with Shannon Lanier. You'll remember that name once we do this, if you don't know it yet. And Ken Morris. Ken Morris is the great, great, great grandson of Frederick Douglass and the great-grandson, great-great-grandson, sorry, of Booker T. Washington. And Shannon Lanier is the direct descendant of Thomas Jefferson on Sally Hemings' side. Wow. And we're going to all join forces to take on modern-day trafficking. Wow. So I don't know yet what that's all going to be. I don't want to say it's going to be a title we're going to have or a certain thing we're going to create, but it's going to be something that'll be created to tackle that. And then, complete side note, but it goes back to something that just I got blessed with about a week and a half ago. I was talking to my friend. And actually started with a conversation with my dad. So actually, you know, it's like someone just said, you know, what's heaven to you, James? I said, Hawaii. I love Hawaii. I love Hawaii. And, and I said, it's Hawaii. And then all of a sudden I'm talking to a friend. This is like two weeks ago. And all of a sudden I just go, you know, like, you know, she's like, what are you thinking of doing for New Year's? I'm like, well, I know 2024 is going to be, I believe, to be the most important year of my life up to this point. So it's always cool to kind of be in a place that you you know, whatever. And I just say the name. I say, you know, I, I might want to just quickly go to Hawaii. And she, and she very calmly goes, well, you know, if you go to Hawaii, you need to go to Pearl Haven. And I said, wait, what's that? And she goes, oh, it's a center for girls, 24,000 square foot center. Uh, they have two years of healing. I'm going, okay, kind of getting out of sex traffic. I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Wow. Right up my, I mean, not only yeah. right up my ass, yeah, got my like, name, like yeah. it's almost like, James, <laughs> yeah. you're going there. So, as I said, I don't know if I'll actually be going exactly for New Year's because I want to make sure everyone's there because it might be on break. But um, my dream is to go and to see the center and to see how they have literally, like, because again, trauma is a lifetime. As everybody knows, it's not over in a night. But the fact that these girls who have gotten out of trafficking get a two-year healing mm -hmm. 
and learn life essentially, get to back to believe in themselves. And they have like dance and music and theater and all this stuff and learn how to organic produce and whatever. There's more to it when I get there. But, and of course, all the actual clinical stuff. But just to see that, because it just adds more to the work I want to be doing in the next year, which is my ultimate dream. It's the last thing I'll say. It won't be all achieved in 2024, but I wish it was, is I want to do a 50 state tour on mental health. And then I want to stay there for two days to make sure it's implemented in the state. You know, it's like, right. it's not just like, you know, you need yeah. to focus on this. No, I want to talk to city council members. I want to talk to businesses. I want to talk to, I want to talk to whoever is involved in the mental health components and say, these are all the things that we need to address in each state because it's standard. It's not like, no, it's different here. No, it's standard. Um, and hopefully we can all agree on that. Fully. Hopefully, yeah. That's the hard part. But but, you, I, but they say I'm a good convincer. Okay, I got to yeah. work hard. I got to work hard. I mean, you've got a you've got a big year ahead of you yeah. right now. It's pretty awesome. So, yeah. do you write as well? I do write. Yeah. We Are have, any yeah. of the films that you're working on? Did you write them as well? Or? It's funny you say that. The one that I'm actually writing now will be a one on human trafficking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I'm excited it, to see all yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. That that'll be like my big one that I'm going to write. But again, I love that you asked that question. I mean, the thing is, writers or as creatives, I hope to say that too just like with the K-pop thing, like that was such a dream come true that just started with a conversation mm -hmm. that led to me seeing what he was doing. If I just said, well, that's congratulations. And then that was the end of it. We don't go anywhere. But the right. fact that I'm like, wait, I'm interested. I want to come see that. I want to, you know. Because when you go back to what we were saying at the beginning, right. right? When you were like, you know, people, oh yeah, nice to meet you. But I realized, and I, I think this does come with getting older right. and being more confident within your own self, right. like who you are asking for things and being curious and saying, no, no, I want to be a part of that. Or how can I help? Or right. who's that I do think comes with a certain level of like, you got to get out of your twenties. <laughs> well, well, and also, and also I'm going to say something very bold here. You got to get out of yourself because yeah. that, I don't even like to use the word, even though it would be defined as a little bit of self-pity, a little bit of like, you're just having everybody expect that you should have everything handed to you. Right. All that wording, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm not saying they're wrong. But I'm saying when you just say, I'm not going to talk about daddy issues. I'm not going to talk about mental health. Like, I'm, like, I'm going to kind of just get to a space going, I want to do this. Yeah. I would love to do a K-pop, whatever. I would love to do a movie. I would love to do something for, you know, human trafficking and stop it. When you just go there and you stop saying, well, I, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to, like, don't do right. that. Just right. say, love to. I right. would love to do that. Let's get it done. Don't well, think about the how, just think about the why. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I like this guy. He's great. He's the best. I'm telling you, <laughs> he is the best. And you know, as you guys are talking, I'm really glad you came to do this because I know I talked to you about it a couple of times before and you were kind of on the fence a little bit. Oh. And then, I don't know, last time we went out to eat, you were like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. And I'm really glad that you did because even though we did start with, you know, some of the bullshit that people yeah. might want to hear about. Of course. Either if they're able, you know, what can they do? Sure. How can they help? Yeah. Or with the, with when we're talking about human trafficking, you yeah. know, what what can they do? You know, even I said to you last time I was on a plane, I noticed in the bathroom a sticker yes. that yes. I had never seen before sure. about human trafficking. So there, people are doing things, and it's becoming yeah. more on the yeah. forefront. Yeah. So if even if this gets people to think about what can they do to help, even if it's something small, absolutely donating a dollar or doing something physically, whatever. Reading it is. an article. Well, <laughs> well, just read. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. just just yeah. read yeah. whether it's something you read online or whatever. Just be interested in like like as I gave those stats at the airports. Those were just stats I looked up. It wasn't like I called a special number yep. and they said, oh, it's this airport. And no, it's just online. You go there. That, it'll tell you. Yep. And or if it yep. takes away from the stigma of mental health awareness and that it's something that we all deal with. You know, you know, I'm nine years sober. Um, yep. And, you know, basically anybody I know who has had a problem with addiction has suffered some kind of childhood trauma or had sure. trauma. I mean, nine times out of 10, that's that's what's going on. Right. And so it is important to shine the light on mental health. And then for me, you know, as we've talked about, you know, you, you've you lived under kind of a shadow and, yep. and to hear about all the exciting things that are happening oh, yeah. for you oh, yeah. and that you've you know got all this great stuff on your plate. I'm so excited. I, I can't wait. I'm... Listen, I expect my invitation to the uh, You will get, you will yeah. be, yes, yes, you will. Yes, I am yes. going to be I'm your date. I'm going dates. to multiple, <laughs> yes. multiple premieres this year, I'm expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's pivot to personal life. Yeah. Let's pivot a little to personal life. Um, obviously you have some amazing projects coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, like what you just described sounds like you're going to like not be home a lot in <laughs> 2024. Yeah, probably not. Um, which is amazing. And congratulations mm -hmm. on all that because that, those are some big projects. Yes. Um, and I really am excited to see what you do. No. So personal life, married, kids, no kids, girlfriends, Maldives, what's going on? 
how has what how, what does your personal life look like in in today's right now? I'm landscape? not. Yeah, exactly. As of this <laughs> podcast, as of yeah, this podcast, yeah. uh, I'm not married. Um, don't have any kids. Um, but you know, we'll see how life goes. Um, but what I can say, and this is why I use the Superman um, motif, I have been so blessed to be in love with someone over 20 years. Someone who's the love of my life, my soulmate, my twin flame, my best friend. And even from afar, I can feel that Superman lowest feeling. I can feel it. I feel it as I sit in this chair. Um, and w- I don't know where that's all going to go. Like I can just say that right now. I don't know where it's going to go. And, and, and I would tell you if there was more to say right now. But I'm just saying I'm so blessed to have experienced that because the beauty of what I experienced even in the last year was able to get me to deal with a lot of what was a trauma in my own life of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not trying to make this sound vain, but again, we'll see where life goes. If you can, if you can be, I'm juicing myself. If you can be someone who loves someone and you can love them over two decades and you can realize that childhood trauma that was never healed with can be triggered to heal via that person back in your life. That's the love of your life. Right. That's a different thing. That's, that's larger than marriage. That's larger than just dating. That's like, wait a minute. This just, that's a, that's like, I mean, please. So that's been the greatest um, experience in that department. So this person's back in your life. Well, I can't say too much. Okay, I, mean, I, got it. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I love that you touched on that. You know, yeah. you know, I've talked about this. You know, yeah. And I, I know about your situation. And sure. Just, I love that you talked about that. Like, yeah. I didn't expect you to talk about yeah. that. And it's awesome that you that you have that and that you yeah. have, that you're able to talk about it. Yeah, and 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 it really is astounding to me because it's like I said, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if I will be married. I don't know if I will be a father. Um, but I know that in this reality, I was able to feel something, experience things and go to places that I had never felt before. Mm -hmm. And I say this very carefully because again, I don't want this to sound like, okay, only you get to experience this, James, but we all know the famous quote or the whatever quote for some people, you know, the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the towers of Ilium. Well, that's not the quote. The quote is sweet Helen make me immortal with a kiss, suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Now that's the quote. (laughs) That's what I've experienced. Wow. So what I feel by having this person alive, by having this person impact me like that, by having, you know, this person um, constantly, you know, in my mental thoughts and spirits, whatever you want to, wherever you want to go with it you know, energy, like the force, which is back to like Star Wars, you know, it has made me become the best person I've ever been. Interesting. You know, no, there's an energy pouring off. Oh my gosh. No, No, it's just, no, it's weird. I I pick up, I'm like, your aura is like bright right now. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so, so that's me like right now. And then, yeah, my life's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you've had some you've had some good times. I've had I've had I've had a lot of good times yeah. uh, in my life. Um a lot of good times. And um you know, and that but that I think that goes back to like as I said, the person that is me. I'm a very free spirited person and um you know, um I don't even know how to say this right because it's just like it, it's just who I am. It's you know, whether it's just going, as, as Dan says, yes, whether it's like flying 2 a.m. somewhere or just seeing someone, it's very James Bond-esque, but whether it's just, you know, whether it's just like going on a spur of the moment thing or, you know, concerts or whatever, it just, I, I love experiencing things that are just, you feel it and you experience it. You know what's funny, as you're boss. saying that, I'm thinking about two things, actually. First of all, you are somebody who will like, Text me at two in the morning. I'm about to get on a private jet to go to yeah. X Y Z. Yeah. Like I'm, uh, I, I just th- this just yeah. came in 30 minutes ago. <laughs> on my way. Oh yeah. I, well, first of all, but, usually what I do is jump and then also, I text. Well, you yeah. like but never also, say no to things. No, yeah. I know. You're also one of the most solid, reliable people I know. Mm, when you and I have a date to meet somewhere, sure. you're always there. No. I never even have to like remind you or anything. Like even Dan said to me, 
this morning he texted me, do you want to confirm with Jamie for today? And I said, well, we texted yesterday. Yeah. I know he'll be there. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, he is like a Swiss watch. Yeah. If he says he's going to be somewhere, he will be there. Not any watch, yeah. a Swiss yeah. watch. Yeah. I like yeah. that. No. Oh, yeah. And by cool. the way, the one time I landed in that, you know, I, I think it was in Switzerland, literally, I kid you not, they, they, this, this is actually reminding me, I kid you not, because they're famous watches. They landed and they were supposed to land at like 11.50 and they landed and it was the one time they landed and they went, it is 11.50. And I went, you know, you guys <laughs> are a little too specific. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So it's too strong. No, he is yeah. super duper reliable. So you, 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 would you say that you're one of those people that any opportunity that arises, you're like, yeah, man. A thousand, a yeah. thousand percent. And I'm also the kind of person like, you know, I don't want to do a full like physical personation here, but it's just, I'm the person that like, it's kind of like what I was saying about the concerts. I'll jump in like a conversation with somebody. And what will happen is like, and this, and this is where I've come to talk about self-love for a second. This is where I've come to love myself more over time because I've seen so many powerful people can be the richest of the people in the world, most powerful considered celebrities or sports stars or whatever, whatever is the world that I, I've, I've said I've loved. And I've even tested it with some of them where you can say, you know, it'd be great. We should go to courtside tonight because they're going to have, and the guy's like, what? And he's just like, no, we should go to court. I'm going, well, I'm going to go, but we should go. And he's like, well, I can't because and you're thinking, wait, you're a very powerful person. He's got his own helipad, but you're still stuck in like, you can't just, you, well, I have, yeah, I have to, you know, yeah, and that's yeah. what I love about me is that if someone says there's an extraordinary moment, I can literally bolt without pause. Right. And it reminds right. me of a great quote my sister said many years ago, she said, never pause. And she's right because- what she means is kind of like what I was saying with Dan. Dan set me up perfectly. I don't not start moving to the airport. I'm already going. Right. I don't know like how long I'm going to stay yet. I don't know where no. I'm like, yep. cool. I'm already going like, okay, I'm heading to. And the thing is, you're not pausing. Don't pause in life. Like I'll give you one quick example. I know people have lives. I know they're busy. But the better response, let me put this out there, okay? Because this is where you miss out on life. The better response to program kind of statements like, like back to, I was saying like courtside, like it's like a couple of years ago and obviously it was during COVID. So I didn't go to that because that was a whole different reality. <laughs> but, you know, as Dan and I know, you know, if the Lakers had been, you know, properly playing and I called Dan at the last second and say, Hey, courtside Lakers tonight, six games, he's there. Going. Like I know that's it. We're yeah. not, it's not even, we're not even talking, but I know so many people go, ah, I got to check with the whatever. Instead of saying, I want to do it. Let me check. Meaning say yes. Yeah. And then go, can we get a babysitter? <laughs> can I call my boss? This is a once in a lifetime. This is the Lakers right. in the championship. Right? right. But so many people, I think they just have these natural, almost everything in their life is programmed Speed to down. say, right, to go, well, wait, when is this? Even saying that, I just told you, you know, it's like, yep. when is this? Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to check what I would get back to. And you go, you're, you're missing the energy that I just threw at you, which is, how the heck did you get courts? You know what I mean? Right. More like that. Like, wait a minute. What are you talking about, man? You got what? Oh, we got to be front row. Taylor, come on. I wouldn't expect <laughs> anything less from you. If you're calling me, it's because you got oh, courts. That's right. Exactly. It's because we got a private helicopter taking us there. I mean, nothing else from Jamie, nothing but the best. You yeah. know, and, and the funny thing is, you know, as much as I know you love talking about like mental health and stuff yeah. like that, I also know you very well. Like, First of all, I can't believe the two kids who were like picking their nose on the on the soccer field. Yeah, yes. yeah. But Jamie loves sports. He loves oh, loves the yeah. Lakers. Oh. We, the last time we got that loud the last clear. time the last time we had dinner together, the World Series was on. We, Correct. We had to like watch the last. We were just there. Like before, before, yes, it was like before. And and now I have to ask you, what do you think about Otani and getting seven hundred million dollars from the Dodgers? Seven hundred well, million. Well, yeah. I, I have yeah. the quickest answer. We yeah. better win. Yeah, we better. Yeah. We that's better. all I have to say. We better win. Yeah. But but that's what we but that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. Like when we got LeBron. We're going to win. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. And, that, and that's one of my favorite compliments I can give our town. You can put down LA all you want. We're winners. Yeah. Yeah. We know what we're going to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and, and so, yeah, the sports in this town is, is amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of my favorite moments, this goes back a couple of years. I remember, um, you know, cause obviously I've been many generations of Lakers. I remember obviously Kobe and Shaq, obviously Magic. And everybody, but you know, you just, what a feeling to be able to experience that type of, we felt they could always win. Right. It was not this, you know, it was right. like, when we, knew, when we knew the challenge of the bosses, whoever it was at the time, or Jordan, and you know, yeah. but chicken, you know, amazing, lights are out, eggs are cool, and butter's getting hot, the jelly, you know. Yep. It, yeah. Well, it's consistent. Yeah. I mean, it's been a, cons yeah, my husband's from Chicago, so he's a huge oh. Michael Jordan fan, oh. but like the bull. Bulls no. haven't had the same no. run since, no. and yeah. Lakers have always had. They always want to win. Yeah, they've yeah. always they've always yeah. been a strong team. 
So, and I remember to this day, like, you know, one of the last times, um, it was the last time actually Jim Bus was live, but I just remember, you know, one of the last times um, my father and I went to a game and he said, and it's, my dad's, you know, he's, he's so funny sometimes, but this is like my classic dad. You know, he knows everybody. Yeah. Like Magical always said, do you want to go to a game? And I'm like, I don't want to bother him. Dad, it's Magic. He owns half the Dodgers. Would you call him, please? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. take him up on these yeah. options. Um, but I do remember a couple of years back, um, you know, we were sitting when Jim Buss was still alive and we were sitting in a suite. And of course, you know, it's the Lakers suite. So, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, there's Magic. You know, and it's like, you know, and obviously a childhood, you know, hero. And my dad just went, let's go talk to him. Let's go, okay, let's go talk to him. And he just like tells the story of like, there was only one seat left. So I gave it to my son and I sat in the car and listened to the radio. And it was like one of the Lakers. I was like, dad, you could have, okay, you're making yourself sad. <laughs> like, stop it. Okay, stop it. I'm the martyr. But, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. the martyr yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, please. But Magic still listened to like the childhood energy of me, of course, you know, just being in that arena and of course, you know, them winning it all and um, running outside and just being so ecstatic like a little kid. And then my mom, thank you again for the back-to-back Lakers. You know, we were there when Pat Riley, of course, said, and next year, I'm guaranteeing everyone, we're going to win it again. I mean, we were literally right oh, there. Pat, like, oh. See, even the Pat Riley era, that was yeah. good. Oh, I thought, I thought I got to meet that Pat was, at a restaurant. It was just like, oh my God, we're the only two waiting here at LA. Oh my God. This is like, this um, but no, Pat was the coolest without coach in history. There's nothing, stop. When he would set the diagram, Armani suits, wherever he's wearing. I mean, he just made it look so like, okay, we're just going to do this. It's going to be like, yeah. Yeah. he was like, he had class. Oh. He had like class. Did and you I'm ever not watch a, I'm not a the, sports the documentary? No. Can we talk about that? No. I'll, I'll get the name of it. Often. So here's a, here's a curious question. Obviously, you, I mean, you're related to like some major, major, major superstars and you're talking about sports yeah. figures. Yeah. Who have you met who has literally just blown your fucking socks off where you're like, this, this is next level. I know that's hard if it's like one, but like, you know. Now, are we just talking sports or is it? No, is, anyone. Oh, no. Okay. I mean, I'm just uh, saying well, you're, you're no, already no, no, around. No, no. I don't know what you're okay. going to say. Who am I going to say? Anyway, I know who you're going to say. Who am I going to say? I almost want to like write it down. Here, write it down. Here, 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 here. Give me, give me, Whisper, give me a... Whisper it. Whisper no, for, is it sports or is it music? No, just anybody in general. No, say it. I want you to say it. I will. Hold on. Okay. 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 Who have you met? Who have you met? Who blew your socks off? And it's Anywhere. not sports. Anybody, Anywhere. you could pick anybody like that you have had an... an, an, an well, no, this moment. is tricky. This is tricky because I've had, I've had many a moments like that. I, um, I know. I can imagine. <laughs> But who who made you just stop in your tracks and go, I I feel like I just met like a next level presence? Because I really have met like so many extraordinary people. I mean, gosh. Well, I'm gonna have to put my mom first. Okay. okay. Well, she, yeah. she's the most extraordinary because that's that's that. Okay, not related. Like not but related. like a celebrity, Somebody, not related. Because you are you are clearly not, yeah. come from good stock. We've talked about this. I would like you to say who you think it is. I want you to say it. No, I want you to say it. I'll tell you if you're right. Who you're not going to tell me if I'm right. No, you're not. I know you're not going to tell is. me. If I, I'm have, right. I, I have. I, already told I have her. the answer. I already told her. Go ahead. Because now I feel like I'm blanking because I've met so many people. Right. I can't think <laughs> of that. No, no, I really mean it. I can't think of like one person. In your work, in 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 what you're passionate about, who have you met that we've talked about that you were in, work about? of what? In mental health and human trafficking and that kind of stuff. Rachel Dunhollander. Really? That's yes. what I was going to say. Well, that's the that's 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 the key because she added Larry Nasser. Oh, oh yeah, yes. but no, I was because we've talked and mm-hmm. uh, you've met Obama. And, I have met Obama, and I know that you he kind of like had an effect on you. Well, I mean, sp- the specific thing I worked with Obama was and Michelle was this uh, Native American youth for mm-hmm. issues of obviously drug abuse, alcohol. They have the highest percentages, yeah. uh-huh. so that's that's the and, um, and that's, suicide too. Right? I, I, no, yeah. right, all, all, all the numbers, the all the numbers, mental health and issues that's and stuff like that. No, I mean, if it was more, if it was in that world, it'd be you know, as I said, someone like a Rachel Dunn Hollander. But in regard to, you know, just because I'm really trying to think here, like if there's that one person, I mean, I almost passed out when I saw Cher. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And, yeah, and, yeah. and that's like, more of, you know. Yeah. But you in know, sport? Well, Michael Jordan pushing uh, someone. That's what I was say. Michael Jordan pushing someone out of the way to get to my father in, in an arena. <laughs> that's uh, amazing. Was extraordinary. And, and, and so I saw that. That was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, that was incredible. Um, and then, and then I think I got to go back to magic because, because. That was my childhood. That was my key. Magic is awesome. You know, yeah. I'll He's tell you, got this too. is about you, but I'm going to tell you a quick magic story. Please. So I'm at Noah's Bagel in Sherman Oaks on Ventura Boulevard. Right. And I'm with, this is years ago. My daughters are young, you know, maybe like three and seven around that age. And we're in line and magic walks in right behind us, right? 
And uh, I, uh, I buy his bagel and I say to him, hey, would, would you mind? I grew up in LA my whole life. I'd love to have a picture with you and my daughters. Right. He goes, get your food, go sit down. Right. We go sit down. He comes, he sits at our table. He puts Avery, my daughter, on his lap and Riley's next to him. And we take a picture and he's like, do you have a good one? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay. It was amazing. My son, who is a basketball freak and is probably around five or six at this time, they might have been just a little bit older. Uh, he, uh, he was like devastated that we saw, he was with his mom at the time and, and at his actual basketball game, he missed Magic and he was, he was really bummed that his, daughter, his sisters got pictures with Magic. The very next week, because we had this like Saturday morning routine, we're at Noah's Bagels again. And now I'm with my son and the girls who walks in right behind us, but magic, right? And, um, I, you know, I don't think I paid for his bagel the first time. I paid for his bagel the second time. And I said, hey, we were here last week. We took a picture with you. I just want to thank you. I love you by your bagel. And Ethan, my son, says, can you ask him to take a picture with me? And I said, you know what, Ethan? I just asked him last week to take a picture with the girls. You're a kid. You Why go. don't you ask yeah. him? I think it's better, you know? And magic is walking out as we're having this conversation. He stops completely on his own and says, he wasn't here last week. Does he want a picture too? Oh my gosh. And he stops and he takes a picture with my son. Amazing. And it I've was, heard he's that kind he's of guy. He's that yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. He really is that kind of but guy. But that's that 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 is an interesting thing about celebrity. And you were saying it about your dad. I mean, when you are in the limelight and you know that people admire you, yeah. there's a certain amount of it that you do have to kind of lean into yep. and go, okay, these are these are people that have made me. Who I am too. Which you know? is interesting too. You know, I'm, I love biographies. That's like my favorite things to read biographies. And I'm reading um, Henry Winkler's biography right oh, now. Oh, wow. And, and Henry's a guy that I kind of admire, you yeah. know, Jewish kid from New York, becomes the Fonz, the coolest guy on television like ever, you know. And he basically, you know, and he's, you know, known to be a really good guy. And he's basically like, I will sign an autograph or take a picture. The only time I won't do it is if I'm late for a plane or if I'm spending time with my kids or grandkids. Any mm -hmm. other time, mm -hmm. I will stop and take a picture and order sign an autograph. Yeah. And, and, I, and so I got that vibe from Magic, you know? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I, lo I love when people can be what you hope them to be. Yeah. Because you know, they, they, are, they are something to us. Yeah. You know? A hundred percent. And so, yeah. And that, you know, uh, by the way, and that comes back to, and I, and I can only speak of my relationship with your dad, but that's, that's what, how I think of your dad. I think of him as Jamie's dad, right. uh, not as some actor or some celebrity. And, and like I said, I know other people that I grew up with whose parents were celebrities right. and you got it very clear that they were celebrities. I've never gotten that from John. I've only ever gotten he's Jamie's dad. Right. You know, every time he's- And, and by the way, I'd yeah. like to put that out there. I want in the future, I want them to just- Anytime someone asks my father a question, now you're Jamie's dad. Right, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The, yeah. I mean, listen, every time I, uh, I see your dad, the first thing out of his mouth is, hey, when was the last time you talked to Jamie? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now that we're talking a little bit about celebrities, you are very close with your sister still. Mm -hmm. And you're a big part of your nieces and nephews' lives, right. I assume. So they're sure. like your, your, yeah. your, your kids, I'm sure, in some way. Sure. How has that been to navigate when she's going through stuff? Mm hmm and you're watching it unfold in the public eye as the protective brother. Well, I mean, I think it's natural. I mean, the thing is, you know, that's where it all started. It started with the protection of her and then, you know, in the direct, you know, um, of her children and my nieces and nephews. And so, you know, obviously, and they're those massively formative years. They're becoming their young adults, yeah. early 20s. That's so crazy thinking that, you know. Yeah. Um, but um but yeah, it, I think it's just very natural. And I just want to be there. You know, any anytime, very much like my mom, uh, anytime I'm blessed to be in their presence, I want to be in their presence. You know, right. like like a quality that you just remind me of, which I I got from my mom, even though, you know, cell phones were not as prevalent as they are now. But back to that idea of her always being like, you are the focus. So a quality that I started many years ago, especially with the whole smartphones, was whenever I'm in the presence of people, I turn my phone off and I mean, I really turn it off. Yeah. Like it's like in my car, I have like a car play thing, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, if I'm in my house, okay, it's on. If I'm in my car, okay, it's on. But if I'm at a dinner, a breakfast, a lunch, even a gala, now if it goes way over, there might be a break and you go, okay, let's just do a little something. But I'm just saying I set my life up so I can be present mm -hmm. with whatever the situation. So yeah. And as I said, they're formative years and, and the young adults and adults are going to become, um, I want to be there for them or for her 
um, you know, whatever she, she's going through. And we, and we have very mutual interests, like, especially if it's like focuses on how to help kids or stuff like that. She'll say something I'll bring in. I'll say, well, then the best thing we might do is this, or she'll say, that'd be good. And then we can do this. And, and so it's, and I know there's going to be many things in the future, um, that we'll probably be working on, which, you know, we've yeah. never done publicly, but you know, like, like together, you know, but like, I know there's many things I think in the future that we'll do together. Yeah, because no. you have, I mean, similar in, interests. She was an ambassador for... I believe the title, yeah, ambassador for the UN yeah, refugees. I yeah. believe something like to that title. So was that some, I mean, all of this philanthropic work, does that come from your family? Like, was your dad and your mom both very involved in these types of causes? Or where did that kind of... I mean... Where did that click? I don't want to give all the credit to my mom, but there was such a heart that she had that I, then I think it was an automatic that kind of we had a heart for mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also, also, um, as with everyone's upbringing, you know, I can't speak for my sister. I can only speak for myself. When you have certain upbringings, especially if you don't like what you're feeling, you know, if you're, you're going through certain things, um, as I said, divorced family, your own trauma, your own whatever, you want to better the future so others don't have to go through that. And I think that that's a classic bond between siblings is that if you're working with a sibling in any capacity, biological, adopted, foster, all that stuff, but you're working with siblings, you, you kind of have, without even saying it, you're saying, we want to do this because we kind of went through this and we don't want this to happen to somebody else. Right. Hey, you know, right. I'm, wait, you said a lot. And I, there's a couple That's what I, I do. Thank you so much. A couple, times, a couple times I wanted to jump in there, but I'm, I'm going to go forwards and then backwards. First of all, I, I, you know, actually, I don't think what you said is 100% true that people, when they have a, a, a upbringing or this or that, they want to give back. A lot of people are very selfish. I mean, even, I, I hate to say it, even myself no, no, no. included at times, but you- No, in I'm our all, case. You have always- I was always, using in our case. You know, you, yeah. yeah. But you have always been someone and, and, no. and, and it has grown over time as, as, as I've known you. You really do want to have an impact and yep. you really do want to change the world for better. Yep. I think that's like, as much as you'd like to have success in, in film and, and, and are passionate about the projects you're working on in film, I think that the number one thing when I think of you is wanting to have a, a, an impact and change the world for good. And I love that about you, you yep. know, and it's nice that yep. both you and Angie are known for that. Um, yeah. So I can't refer to her as Angie. <laughs> you know, um, just like I can't, you're not Please just, don't. Jamie. Please I, don't. I, 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 but um you know, it's, you, first of all, you talked about your nieces and nephews. It, it's funny. We talked about how strongly you and your sister look like your mom. I see it when I've seen pictures of them, that they look, that, that same family resemblance is there. You genes know, Yeah, there. the genes are there. They're strong, <laughs> strong. Strong. Strong in uh, that one. Yeah. But, um, uh, oh, shoot, you, you mentioned something else. That, oh, the turning off the phone, you yeah. know? You, we've never talked about that. But now that I think about it, when we're at dinner, I sometimes do, but you never do. No, I don't. You don't. You don't. You absolutely Dan does. Don't. Let's yeah, say I that do. again. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I, that's amazing. And the fact that you brought it up, I'm going to be more conscious about that. But, uh, but, but, but I'll but, tell you, not to go off, but yeah. I just want, I want to add to that. But I think it's the start point for all of us, even being selfish in that moment, we can start that process. Does that make sense? Sure. It's, it's because so many of us, I mean, it's the classic LA joke, right? Dating. It's, you have a date tonight unless she comes up with a better opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like that's the classic joke, but that's also constantly being in that reality. Yeah. You know, a person leaves the table. I've always said this. It's very weird dating this time of our lives because, you know, someone goes to the restroom, they check their Instagram ex-boyfriend or yeah. somebody texts them. Now they're not hundred percent there. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a quick compliment. Yeah. Then they, yeah, they said the uh, dessert tray will come out in a minute. Yeah, but it doesn't matter yeah. if we're not the same. So that's what I'm always trying to say. If you want to have, and again, I'm not even talking about like, even like, like, you know, humanitarian here per se, philanthropic. I'm just saying that that's why I said, go back to my mom just to kind of tie it in a bow. That's why I go back to my mom in regard to how she responded to the abuses in the church. If, if you want a better reality, you have to respond strong. Yep. You can't just go, well, I have to do this and that. And you know, they don't understand me. And well, that's being selfish. Yep. See, that's all you. It's, it's eventually you have to say, I want not just my kid, my kid, because that, that's one of the most famous phrases. Well, my kids, my kids, my kids, our children. How about mm-hmm. that? Try that on for size for a second. Because usually when you go to a playground, you need another kid. Yeah. Okay. So our children should have a happy playground. Our children should have a safe neighborhood. Our, you know, go a yep. little more outside, yep. right. you know, open right. up. I like that though, about being present. And you, you did mention as we were sitting down. Yeah. That, 
Jamie does not have right. any social I'm media. I'm glad you did. I was going to out him, but now you no, did. No, yeah, I yeah. think that's great. Which and, is amazing. And the funny thing is, like, so, you know, like I said, we'll go out to dinner every so often and, and um, you know, three, four times a year. And and I remember when I first got Facebook. I'm like, Jamie, look, here's Facebook, you know. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm not going on social media. And I'm like, no, but you can, Good like, you. go on. Because I, I had other friends who who are known who would go on and create, like, a fake account with a fake name. You know Just what so I mean? they could like scope well, no, it. and yeah. they'd let people who they were friends with know that it was them, right, so right. that they could be on there. He's like, "Nah, I'm not gonna." Do I'm like, "Dude, you could go on with a fake name, you know, and just be like connect with people that you were friends with." And I, no, I'm not gonna do that. No Instagram. I remember when I went through my divorce and uh, I'm going out, and I'm like, "Jamie, check this out. This is Bumble. Look, you swipe <laughs> to the right, you swipe to the left." Tinder. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's like, "That's cool, you know," but like, no social media, none of that. It's no. it's it's pretty impressive. But as I said. You know, it, like no it, social media, like not even the dating apps. Oh, I don't need dating. Apps. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will concur with that. I can, yes. I can see. I can yeah. see that's probably yeah. not. Did you see the dimples? I <laughs> mean, I mean, it's, I literally the jaw, the whole thing. I, I just, I, yeah. There's, there's beautiful genes happening for sure. No. no. Um, no, but that's interesting. And I, I, I tend to be very much in the now, like I'm a present person. I constantly lose my phone. Mm. It is the biggest fight my husband and I have because my husband will get stuck in the scroll and then he's like stuck in it. Yeah. And I'm like, get out. And oh, now yeah. that I'm raising a child who is also like, when can I get my first Instagram? I'm like, never. And I talk to him about you can't unsee things. And I Keywords. do exactly. Yeah. Keywords. And he knows that. And he actually will will mirror that to his friends going, yeah. my mom said I shouldn't be watching that because I can't unsee it. And I'm like, oh, thank God, something I'm doing yeah. right. But it it is such an, I see it breaking well, these kids. Well, well, let's go real. Let's we're gonna go very real. I mean, ever since COVID and ever since, you know, all that's gone down, you know, suicide for our teenage girls and boys oh, yes. has gone through the roof. Yes. Nothing breaks my heart more than that sentence. Yeah. And what happened with COVID, we went even more into technology. Like it just, we keep going. It's like we go one level. it was only way right, out. Right. Yeah. So I can't say that enough. I mean, as I said, I don't have to deal with this at this moment, but I would be all over this because it's, there is a point just using the classic word that seems to not exist anymore, especially for children. There is a part of us as children that we deserve an innocence. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter you what that it. time is. I don't know what the time is because I'm not, you know, but there's a time we deserve that innocence. And if we're just basically making you go adult. That, that's what's that's happening. That's it. You're an adult. Then you're, yeah. That's one of the things that his, my son's school is very good about. They're like, keep the kids, kids. And they are very young. And I love right. that. Like they're in fourth grade. They all brought their stuffed animals yesterday. Every single one of them. I'm like, I love that. Yes. But- there is that fear because we, I just had the sex talk, which is a real interesting thing. And he did think it was from kissing. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> he knew the biology though. He knew that there was a sperm and an egg. He just didn't know how they met. Oh, and so he thought it was kissing. So I threw that out there and then I freaked him out even more by going, and sometimes we still do that. And like, he's that's just like, it. That's it. it. That's it. That's the conversation. Anyway, like I, I said to him, I go, listen, you know that on the internet, you can look up anything. And I need you to know, I really do not want you to look that up because what you will find is a not real, mm -hmm. but there's stuff out there that is really awful towards mm -hmm. women. And I need you to not put yourself mm -hmm. in, in harm's way. Yeah. And I know he gets that. I told you he's pretty self-aware. I know that he understands some of that, but that adultifying of children when one of my friend's kids at seven saw porn. Like, how do you explain that to a child? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, by the way, that's not what that's supposed to look like mm -hmm. at all. And I think there's so much danger in the way that technology has been rolled out to the youth. They are still now playing catch up. With, oh, oh my question. God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And especially with everything that's going on in the news cycle, it, you get caught up in, in TikTok news, you get caught up in just constant barrage of stuff that affects your mental health and you don't right. even realize how it's affecting your well, mental and, health. And just to go back to that number, I mean, you go back a few years, even though it's all happened like exponentially since COVID and other things, but you go back a few years and you know, people would say, yeah, the stats, you know, as I said, trafficking 13 years old. Yeah. But now they've been an adult since eight or nine or 10. So they're already there. They're at 13 the mentality, to right. six, a, 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 a 27 year old man and getting correct. in their car. This is correct. I mean, that's, look, I have a son. It's hard enough. 
there are times where I am very thankful I don't have a girl in this day and age mm-hmm. for real. And there are real issues, you know, like just all, all of it, like yeah. videotaping, you know, a, a, a sexual assault. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Well, like, and, 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 and by the way, you just went for the jugular. I mean, that's what people, especially parents, because. And being a bystander to that. Well, and that's the whole point. Like we're in high school. Let's go back in time. There's a rumor. There's a something. Now there's footage. Now it's all over the place. The girl's not going to show up on Monday morning. No. She's going to go in isolation. She might try to kill herself in yeah. four days. And people go, why would she do that? Well, you just answered it. Right. Because there's evidence. There's this. There's that. That's already embarrassed her. It's been blasted around the and whole thing. And it's shamed. And right. you're shamed. Right. And that's, there's so much, there's so many levels to it. So one, I commend you for not having social media. Do you fear that with your nieces and nephews? I mean, are I mean, are, are they active on social media? Is it hard for them not to be because of the, top, you know, the air and Yeah, to my, no, to my knowledge, because I, you know, as I said, I don't focus yeah. on any of that and haven't been asked to deal with that in any kind of protection way at the moment, uh, at least. But um, I think they're very cautious. Let's put it that way. I think they, I'm not saying they necessarily go under a pseudonym or they go under, you know, something, no, but, but they don't. It's a different kind of yeah. um, interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, because yeah. there are, there are, so I know celebrity kids who have open Instagram accounts and I'm like, no, it's crazy. We're like, no, it's crazy. Close it. it's, like, yeah, listen, I deal with it with my kids and, you know, my kids, um, they, their the, the elementary school, they, they graduated in sixth grade. And so that's when uh, their mom, but I'd say Pam makes most of the decisions. My, my ex-wife makes most of the decisions when it comes to these things. And I trust her because, you know, she's pretty caught. She errs on the side of caution and, you know, and when my kids all graduated sixth grade, that's when they got Instagram so that they could keep in touch oh, yeah, with the no. other kids that had gone to school with them. And she monitors it. She has the codes to their phone and she sets all the passwords and all that stuff. And she watches what they're, what they're doing. But um, yeah, no, I mean, look, we, my kids have gone to school with other kids of celebrities, um, people that I think, you know, and they do, they have open Instagram accounts. It's amazing to me. You know, my daughter what grew up with the the child of a celebrity who is now my, you know, my daughter's 20, but now this kid, the mom and the kid are in some ads together that I just can't, like, I would never put my kid in this position. Like, <laughs> I just can't even believe it. Like, and, and it's weird when I hear myself, like I listen to the two of you guys talk and you seem so educated and so well-versed. I, I feel like a moron when I'm opening my mouth talking no. about this stuff, you know, but I'm just kind of sharing. Just quoting my, shit. I'm, I'm like just that. sharing, all sharing my experience with you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you have to, you know, it's weird. And it's, it's weird with boys too. My son's 17 and, and, you know, he's just now starting to talk to me about maybe some stuff that is, you know, he felt uncomfortable talking right. about before. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have had, we're keeping you longer than you probably even intended to be here, but this has been great. And I really do hope that you come back and feel like this is a safe space and Definitely. tell us all about the things that are coming up in 2024, because I'm excited to see all these projects come to fruition. And if you need any help, I don't know, I'm around. I'm, if you need someone you gotta, to hold I, a boom I'm or gonna anything. I'm going to cut you off for one second before yeah. you go into this. Because yeah. there were two things that I'm going to just touch on super quick, <laughs> super really fast. fast. All right, go. Okay. First of all, Lightning Jamie round. is one of oh. my favorite people to share a meal with. Even though he's like a string bean, he, this guy can put it down like all I right, can. All right. We, I, we love going to Mastro's. We, he'll let me order and then he's in on it. I mean, he's one That's of my, my kind favorite, of <laughs> favorite people to share a meal with. Because he, uh, you know, it's the best. And I was just telling Dan about sushi by scratch. So Jamie says to me, you know, our, our, our regular is Mastro's. He and I will go to Mastro's a couple times a year. But he said, we were talking, he's like, let's go for sushi. He's like, find me a place, you know? And it just so happened that sushi by scratch came on my radar. I'm gonna do a little plug for them. And it's this amazing omakase, right? And um, we go in there, we sit down, we have this amazing, it's like a 20 course meal. Oh, this sounds right? good. Yeah. It was amazing. We had the best time. We, it, we left there. We were like, that was like one of the best meals we both have, have. And I know you've had amazing experiences. I've had amazing experiences. We both looked at each other and was like, that was awesome. And so I've now told Dan he has to go there. I, I just got to throw that in a little plug. Go, Dan. Sushi by Scratch is awesome. But Jamie, you're one of my favorite person, people to share a meal with. I love, I love, love, love when we get together a couple times a year and, and sit down and just you and I have catching up. I, I, I absolutely love you. I can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ditto, Dan. And I just want to say one quick thing before you do the yeah. finale. Um, can't thank you enough for this. I love you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to be here. And happy birthday. Thanks. Thanks.